the greater good. Hey everybody, Greater Good Mining here. So today I'm gonna overclock the crap out of my commemorative edition green machine KS0 Pro. So the one you see right now is mostly stock. I have uh, dual AC Infinity fans, they're Axial 1238 fans with a single controller. And I have mounted the fans, the internal fans that came on the KS0 Pro to the outside just to get a little bit better airflow through the middle of the Caspa ASIC here. And that's all I've done to that KS0 Pro. I'm gonna overclock that one in another video. The one I'm gonna be overclocking today is the one that I prepped in my arrival video. The heat sinks that I glued on, the glue is cured. They are on there nice and solid and I've got the fins all spread out. Now, um, I've also re-padded and re-pasted this with Arctic TP3 thermal pads, Arctic MX6 paste. So we should be good to go now to get this thing fired up. So you can see the meter box. Um, I've got the stock KS0 Pro running. I wanted to show like a baseline of how many watts we're pulling over here. So right here, you can see 93 watts and that's for the CAS basic on its own. And then 43 watts, that is how much we're pulling with the fans maxed out. The temp, the, um, it's on high, the fan controller. So that is as hard as the fans can push. And we will check in PB Farmers overclocks that I'm gonna to use today. We're gonna to watch our chip temperatures. We're gonna watch the intake and exhaust temperatures. We're gonna see how hard we can push the KS0 Pro with all the proper mods on it. So I'm gonna just put this back together. It's gonna end up looking just like that. Um, but that one, I'm saving for another video. We'll see what the difference is between maximum mods and just some cooling solutions. I, I wanna see how this does. I'm very curious to see um, what the you know maximum modifications do compared to very minimal. Okay, so first we're gonna mount the fan to the outside of the unit. And I wanted to give you guys a quick tip. Um, the plates, the commemorative edition Caspa special plate is held on by these screws. You took, you know, you saw me take them off in my other video. And these screws actually work fine to hold the fans down. Um, so you don't have to go buy extra screws. There's enough thread on there to grab and hold the fan down. So I'm not gonna go buy any extra screws. I'm just gonna use the ones that came from the plate and we're just gonna screw it down just like that. And then you don't have to spend extra money. Save a, save a few bucks and don't go hunt down screws. Okay, so I've got the Axial 1238 mounted with those free screws, love it. And then now I'm gonna mount the back plate that we have the internal fans mounted externally just be mindful of the way you route your wires um, you will need the extra slack to plug the fans back in if you know what i mean so just be careful the way you um, aim these you know you want your wires this one especially right here um, you have to route it a certain way to kind of get it to reach where you need to plug the fans in so just be mindful of that when you put it back together i'm going to slap this back together and then we're going to steal the shroud kit and the fan off of the stock, mostly stock KS0 Pro, so we can overclock this one. Okay, so we've got the shroud kit and fans mounted. We've got our meter boxes set up so we can see how much wattage we're pulling. Right now, 91 watts, 92 watts for the miner itself and 42 watts to 43 watts for the two fans I got running at full blast. So now we got our baseline. Okay, here we are in the web GUI and here is my hash rate, if you learn for a gay hash, and my temps. This is the exhaust temp even though these are flipped around for some reason on the KS0 Pros. It doesn't really matter. The higher one's the exhaust temp, that's 40 degrees right now, and the lower temps intake, 28 degrees, and I have the fan set to it's minimal setting right now, the dual AC or our Axial 1238s. It's pulling about 25 watts on the minimal setting. So um, we'll be ramping that up as we start to overclock. Speaking of overclocks, let's go ahead and check those out. Okay, so here is the R Dugan or PB Farmer 
overclocks. This is the firmware. You have to adjust the overclocks yourself. Um, so there is a very detailed readme file. I'm going to leave links to the overclock firmware download page and the readme file in the description of this video. When you overclock with PB Farmers overclocks, you really should understand all of what he says here. And it's a long read, but you should read through everything so you can learn exactly what to do. You're gonna be adjusting the clock offset up and just kind of gradually tweaking that up. And he gives very detailed instructions on how to do that. Patience is key here because it takes a while um, You'll see in the instructions, it's not um, like an instant thing. You have to wait and watch to see what your adjustments are doing to your machine. You should wait at least a half an hour. Um, ideally, you wait two hours to really see the effect of what the pool is doing, um, how the clock is actually doing. And then once you get maxed out on here and you start seeing like rejected shares and um, your voltage will drop as you're going up with your clocks, you might have to adjust your voltage up, but don't do it unless you need to, because then you're gonna be using more power and it's gonna create more heat. So read through the files, and that's what I've done to learn how to do this. Um, KS0 Pro has fine adjustments, two millivolt increments, if you need to adjust your voltage up. So it's nice because you can very finely tune your KS0 Pro, but you have to finely tune it on your own. I don't know what your KS0 Pro will do. Mine might be different from yours. I'm going to tweak these. It's gonna take me a long time, but it's worth it if you take the time to do it right. So I will tweak mine and I will do my best to get the maximum I can safely and stably. And you could try a clock similar to what I have and voltage similar to what I end up with but it might not work on yours. Um, you know, your, your environment might be different from mine. You might have warmer ambient temps. You might have bad silicone lottery. Um, a lot of stuff can go wrong. Um, so just be very careful and know that if you overclock your KS0 Pro, you could damage it. Um, you are voiding your warranty for sure. If you've done anything that you've seen in my previous videos with the Hot Rod, the KS0 Pro video, or the one I did yesterday um, where the green machine arrived. Um, so. All this stuff is voiding your warranty, you're taking on risk. So just be careful, follow all of these instructions. It can be a little overwhelming when you look at the updated web GUI. Um, there's a lot going on here, but when you look at it and you tweak things, it will make sense to you. Um, here's your hash rate. You've got your board temperatures here, chip voltages, chip temperatures, fan speeds, chip clocks. So there's a lot of data, a lot of information so get to know this web GUI. You'll just have to take your time and be patient. So um, let's go ahead and, um, I already downloaded it, but um, just for your KS0 Pro, you're gonna need the updated file right here, KS0 Pro update.bgz. Um, I've shown this in a ton of other videos, but if you guys wanna know how to do it, I'll just show you real quick. Okay, so you've already downloaded the correct file from PB Farmers GitHub, and you're gonna to go to your firmware upgrade section in your web GUI, and you're going to click select file. And just be careful if you downloaded any of the other overclocks, because this is the regular KS0, and here is the KS0 Pro. So we're gonna click on that, and then we're gonna hit update. It might take a few seconds here. Okay, operation succeeded. Hit okay, and then confirm restarting the machine. And then that will take us a few. And when we come back into the web GUI, you should see PB Farmers like logo. And then we should be able to start overclocking this KS0 Pro Green machine. When I log back in, I got a software disclaimer. So read all of the warnings here and hit accept. And here we are with light mode engaged. Let's get rid of that. Prefer the darkness. Okay, so here we are in the new and improved PB Farmer web GUI. So we've got hash rate five minute, 30 minute, and two hour. Don't really bother with the five minute. Um, if you're making adjustments, at least wait 30 minutes to see what it does. You know, I'll probably at least look at the 30 minute and kind of go up in increments. It, it takes time. 
but it will be worth it if you can overclock your KS0 Pro to the max and have it nice and stable and steady. And this is the way to do it. So um, the web GUI, you've got your hash rate, you've got your board temperatures, chip voltages, chip temperatures, chip clocks, fan speeds. You can change it from um, like summary mode to all, and then you'll get to see more details of all your chips, what temperatures they are all at. Uh, same with voltages, you can see where your voltage is um, at on all your chips. So it's very, very detailed. It helps you adjust your clocks to a, like a fine tune, if you know what I mean. So speaking of clocks, uh, in the minor setting section, um, when you first go in here, it'll be another warning. You have to click that you accept, uh, read the warning and click accept, and then your performance configuration section will pop up. Um, so this is where you adjust your clock offset and your voltage offset. Um, like I mentioned before, read the README file so you understand how to do this. Um, you will need to adjust your clock offset up slowly and don't bother messing with the voltage until you've kind of maxed out your clock offset. Um, you'll, you'll tweak it up and up and then eventually you'll start getting like maybe some rejected chairs or some instability. Um, sometimes I've seen and heard that people's miners just kind of like shuts off like it just isn't happy with whatever you're doing. Um, a lot of that seems to happen when the VRAMs or the, um, the you know, the VRM or the uh, uh, MOSFETs overheat. Um, but I'm hoping that the copper heat sinks will help take care of that. And I've got the shroud kit with the dual Axial 1238s on. Um, right now it's at the minimum fan setting, but I'll crank that up if I need to, to try and keep the temps under control so I can max the overclocks out. So I already have an idea um, of what I want my clock offset and voltage to be, but um, you should tweak these up slowly. I'm going to punch in um, my own clock offset and voltage. I'm gonna see how it does, and then I will report back to you guys. Okay guys, so I've been getting over 300 gig hash per second for about an hour or so now and everything is looking pretty good um, so here is some good information and uh, hopefully it's helpful the power stage like the MOSFETs um, it is very cool that we have temperatures that we can visualize now um, instead of just guessing so um, my max has been like 85 for my power stage and I see little spikes every once in a while, hits 85 and comes right back down. So I, I from what I understand, around 100 degrees um, is kind of like, you don't want to be over 100 degrees for too long. Um, so I have a little bit of wiggle room from what I understand for the power stages. Um, I, I don't want to push it where it's over 100 for any extended period of time. And then the chip voltages are looking pretty good. Um, nice and steady. Um, my chip temps are good. Um, you know, 39. Uh, looks like the max is 43. So we are good there. The um, Arctic MX6 is doing its job, and the meter box um, shroud kit is doing its job. The Axial 1238s uh, are doing their job. Everything's doing its job. Um, so my clocks, um, 825. My um, 275 is my clock offset and 35, uh, 34 is my voltage offset right now. So I'm gonna try to keep pushing it. Um, I just figured I would let you know I got to this point after about an hour and 45 minutes and uh, you know this is where I'm at. This, this is you know why it takes some time. You have to just kind of wait a while, make sure everything's stable and then you can move on. So um, and I haven't even gotten to the two hour mark yet um, and I'm an hour and 45 minutes in. So. Uh, but I mean, you can see on the graph here, it's, it's been running pretty steadily for a very uh, long time, um, over 300 gig hash. So I'm going to go ahead and continue to push it and hopefully um, I can kind of just max this thing out. Let's see, let's see how hard we can push this thing. Okay, so I was tweaking last night and I got to a point where I was like, okay, I'm just going to see how stable it is. And I've been getting 330 gig hash um, or more um overnight so it's been looking really good and um it's been running for 12 hours total 12 and a half hours total um and my power stage um they're only running about 89 degrees uh, so I, I know we can go a little higher if we want there's a little bit more wiggle room there uh, voltages are you know pretty steady um chip temps not bad really max 46 that's really not bad 
So I am happy that this is running stably at 330 gig hash, and but I I can't help but want to push a little bit more. So um, we'll see. Let's let's just tweak a few things, see if we can kind of eke it up just a little bit more, just a tiny bit at a time. Uh, this is why some people get frustrated because it takes a it takes a while. But if you want the max out of it, you you have to do it kind of slowly and surely. So anyway. Uh, wish me luck. I'm going to push it a little bit harder see what we can do. Slowly tweaking up. We're up to 334 giga hash. Okay, so after a long tweaking session, I am at 340 giga hash on the 30 minute average. I'm going to let it run for a little while longer and hopefully it just stays stable. It's been stable for a little while now. So it is looking good. I'm pulling about 184 watts. I am close to maxed out on the voltage. Um, I'm at 46 right now. So um, Kiwi Farmer said 47 is about the max. So I am very close to maxed out there. So I'm not sure how much more I can eke out and keep it stable. Um, I might try and see what I can do, but I am very happy with this. It is running very nice. Um, my V, or sorry, my power stage temperature max is like 93. Looks like it goes down to about 88 or so. So in the 88, high 80s, low 90s range. So I still have a tiny bit of wiggle room there, but I'm running out of room on my voltage. And when I turn up the clock um, without turning up the voltage lately, it seems like it wants to try and crash. So I think for now, I'm gonna call it at 340 and I will save further tweaking for another video. I'm also gonna do another video where I overclock the very slightly modified KS0 Pro that you saw in my arrival video. Um, I'll leave a link, uh, you know, a card at the end of this video so you can see that video. And then you can also see my Hot Rod KS0 Pro video so you can see all the prep that I did in detail to get to this point. So watch those two videos um, if you want to have the same setup as me and you might be able to get the same results. We'll see. Um, don't forget their silicone lottery. Um, all the items that I use, I have Amazon affiliate links um, in the description of the video if you found this video helpful if you use those links it does help my channel out a little bit at no cost to you um, i'm going to be mining with this to a caspa edition tangent wallet if you want to get a tangent wallet um, discount code is in the description of the video um, and all of my other affiliate links are down there too so if you guys appreciated the content um, you know check out my affiliate links if you're looking for something like that like a tangent wallet um, i have an ice river code that's good till tomorrow but it looks like all these are all sold out unfortunately and then don't forget, there's a few more of these shroud kits at meterbox.com. I have a discount code for them too. They're running out though. I think there's only like 10 left. Um, and that was last night I saw. So they might be gone by now. So if you want them, uh, now's your chance to get them. It looks sweet with the green KS0 Pro. And then you still have a chance to win a KS0 Pro with that meterbox uh, giveaway. So anyway, I hope this video was helpful to you. If it was, hit the like button. Uh, consider subscribing to my channel. And don't forget to keep it decentralized for the greater good. The greater good.